I'm Travis with Subsurface Solutions. I want to show you how to pair your GPS device, the geode, um, to your RD8100 and we'll also cover the 8200 series locator. So if you're using subsurface maps and want to create or collect your readings, your locate, uh, using the locator, you can simply hit the survey cert button to trigger uh, the app to take a reading. But uh, first of all, uh, before you get started, you got to make sure that everything's talking to one another since everything's ran through Bluetooth. And so uh, we have a fancy mount that will mount the GPS right to the locator along with hold your phone. Uh, but if you're unpacking this for the first time, uh, you can take the geode out and on the front of the geode you'll have lights to tell you the status of your battery. There inside the box you'll have your AC charger uh, that will plug into the USB outlet right here on the front of your geode. Uh, whoop, wrong one there, there's the antenna one right there. So when you plug that in uh, it will show it charging up here uh, the light on the very bottom uh, will turn um, uh, to a flashing color, a flashing orange color, and then it will go solid when it's fully charged. You want to make sure you charge everything up as soon as you unbox it. Um, it, it may end up taking six plus hours to, to charge fully uh, when you first charge it. Uh, it will last all day. It will give you about 10 hours worth of battery life off the geode, and so you do have plenty of time to get your work done for the entire day on one battery charge. But when you turn the unit on, the first thing you want to do is Bluetooth your geode to the phone and also the locator to the phone. And so you have your Android phone, um, our Android tablet device, and you can just scroll down from the top and go into your Bluetooth settings. You see the little B icon for Bluetooth up there and you can just hold it down and go into your uh, Bluetooth settings. And within these uh, Bluetooth uh, settings here, you should be able to find the geode as soon as you turn the geode on. I'll just scroll through here and look for the geode device and if you have to, you have to hit scan multiple times. The serial number here should show up on the phone 294628 and there it is, the very first one. I'll just go ahead and click on it. It says pairing and you're ready to go. And now we want to pair up the locator and so you only have to do this pairing process once. It should remember it after you do it that one time. On the RD8100 series, what you'll do is hit the on-off key real quick while the unit's on, and you'll scroll through the menu with the up-down arrows here until you get to BT for Bluetooth. And you'll see it right there, BT. So then you hit the right button here, which is also your antenna button to go into that menu of the Bluetooth and scroll through until you see the word pair. Uh, just go up or down until you see pair and then you hit the antenna button again to go into that and we want to pair this to a PC not to the transmitter TX we want to see BT to PC and we're going to go into that and now when we see that we're going to hit the F key which is your back arrow and the B will start flashing on the locator and you go ahead and rescan on your phone again looking for this locator and this locator is serial number 4388 it should come up 8100 there it is 8100 I'll go ahead and hit pair and when it asks for a pen it's pretty simple it's one two three four hit pair and it will finish pairing it's already done on the phone it will say okay on here in just a second and two more seconds there we go and so now we're ready to go ahead and start collecting but one thing you want to check uh, before you get going is there's several different protocols that language that this locator speaks through the Bluetooth and at, um, coming from the factory the protocol is set to PPP so I'm gonna hit the on off key again real quick oh actually I'll go to Bluetooth sorry go to Bluetooth BT Go into that by hitting the antenna key and then go to protocol. There's PROT. I'll go into that and I want to change it from PPP to ASCII by using the up down arrows here. So when you see ASCII, go into that by hitting the antenna key and make sure it's on, uh, change it from 1 to 2. Make sure it's on ASCII 2. So that is straight American language, imperial, and that will um, come over. Um, as feet and inches in, instead of the metric system. And so 
as comma separated text. So now I'll just hit the, keep hitting the F key to get out of everything and I am done with the 8100 series locator. If I needed to pair this to the 8200 locator, the way I do that is, again, turn the unit on and off, hit the on off key real quick, just like on the 8100, go through here until you get to, where is it at? SM log. So when, that's the same thing as Bluetooth on the 8100. So when you go to SM log, go into that and make sure that your communications is on, first of all, com on, and pair. Go to pair, and this only pairs the, through the SM log, it pairs only to a PC. So I'm going, uh, if I hit the right arrow here, it doesn't do anything. It's just ready to pair. And I'll go ahead and hit the left arrow. B will start flashing. And again, I'll do a scan on my phone. Look for the 8200. And this one will come up with serial number 715, it looks like. And there's 715. So go ahead and pair this up using the same code, 1234, hit pair. And again, this is ready to go. The, the phone's ready to go. Now I'll just wait for the word OK on here on the locator. There we go. And so I will go ahead and get going. I'll shut off the 8200. And we'll use the, my 8100 here. And I'll mount the GPS mount right on the front. It just slides right on. And so before you slide it all the way on, I go ahead and attach my geode onto the quarter inch screw on the top. I get it so my, my light can be seen as I'm using the locator on the front there. So I can see my battery status, I can see my, my uh, GPS status of the satellites. And so it's nice and snug also right there as I'm looking at the screen of the locator. Now, uh, we made this mount so you can mount your phone onto the left or to the right, depending on if you're left or right-handed. And then the phone will go right in here. So now I'll go ahead and exit out of my Bluetooth and um, I'll go to my Play Store. And if you go to the Play Store, you can do a search for subsurface maps offline. And you'll see it show up on here, Subsurface Maps Offline by Ben Hill. And you go ahead and install it. If you already have it installed, then it will show up on the screen as an app right there. And I'll just go ahead and start it. When you start the app for the first time, it may ask you for your login credentials. So you, we would have already sent that to you. It's your email address along with a, a password that nobody knows but yourself. And then um, when you get logged in, it's going to ask you which map you want to go to. Right now I have no maps listed, so I need to download a map. And you'll go ahead and create a map online on the desktop version uh, that you can utilize. And we'll go ahead and uh, connect to the server. So I hit download new map. It's going to download all the maps that I have listed on the server. And depending on which job I'm on, I will go ahead and click on the one that I want to download and keep on the phone all the time. And where's it at? Wisconsin. Okay, there we go. It's downloading. Downloading the cached base maps. And the, the, it's caching the base maps that it thinks I'm going to use out there on the job site. And so um, that, will, that will take a little while um, the first time you go to download the map. Once it's on your phone, it opens right up. 97, almost done. There we go. So there it is on our job list. I will go ahead uh, and open it up, but just so you know, if you're not going to use this job, if you're completely done, if you've got a list of a bunch of jobs on here, you can delete these at any time by hitting the settings uh, key and then hit delete map. It won't delete it from the server. It'll just delete it off your phone. So if you're done working in the field with it, you can go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, but I'm going to open this up and as soon as you open, it's going to pull up the base map of where I'm at along with all my different icons I can control on the top here. And so the first thing I want to do is pair up my GPS. So let's go outside and we'll get some GPS satellites coming in. Since we're indoors, we're not going to get very good accuracy. We get a good view of the sky. When I start getting satellites to come in, 
I will actually see my light for the satellites, the very first button here to start flashing. And that means it's starting to pick up satellites, but it doesn't have them all locked on yet until that light goes solid. We want a nice solid light in order to give the accuracy that we need on our phone. And the accuracy of the geode is really good. The geode will give you about six inch accuracy or a little bit better as long as it's got a good view of the sky. It retains its memory or its accuracy uh, for a good 30 seconds possibly when you get up too close to a building too. So if you got to take some readings on a meter or something right near a building or underneath some tree canopy, get the accuracy out in the open and then hurry up, get in there, say, uh, and take a point and it should maintain a pretty good accurate reading under a foot or so. And so the geode it has um, been the easiest one to connect, but you can use multiple different GPS devices. The Catalyst from Trimble, uh, you can use um, an Aero system, you can use any GPS you want, RTK, not RTK, whatever you want, any, depending on what accuracy uh, you desire. And so, once we get this GPS going here, you can see the flashing light is now going there, uh, we can start our app uh, by first thing we want to do is um, click on the menu button here and I'm gonna hit GPS setup um, when I go into GPS setup I can go ahead and select the devices onboard GPS or I can go find that geode that I Bluetooth and select that when I select that my blue light will come on on the geode letting me know I am now connected you want to see that blue light and I'm gonna get a, uh, a latin long start coming in along with an accuracy number you can see my gps accuracy right now is 1.38 foot and that's going to get better as we stand out here in the open and so now that i know the gps is connected and it's talking i can go ahead and close that and next thing i want to do is go to draw mode gps trace GPS trace is what you use when you use the locator. You do have different draw modes. Um, so if I go back to draw, you can see I can manually draw on a point by hitting the blue button. I can just, if I want to zoom in on a location, maybe I don't have good GPS, but I know where that point needs to be taken. I can manually put it in by hitting the blue button. Or I can hit the yellow crosshairs, which will hone in on my location where I'm standing and put a point. But I'm going to use GPS trace because I'm going to use this with the locator. I'm going to draw points and lines at the same time. So I'm going to do the locate and when I'm happy with my location, I'm going to hit the survey button on the locator and it's going to trigger it to take a reading along with draw a line behind me uh, uh, connecting all those dots. And so when I go to GPS trace, it asks me for those two layers. So I want to have a points layer. Uh, that the line locate information will go into and so you'll set these up beforehand these different layers on your desktop version but I'm gonna pretend I'm on a, a, a copper telephone line so I'm gonna select copper survey points and then underneath line I'm going to collect a copper cable so I'm gonna um, select copper cable and last thing you want to do is hit the settings button right next to that and choose which locator you're using we're using the 8100 but you can see my 8200s in there as well so I'm gonna select the 8100 and I'm gonna test my connection before I close the screen by hitting the survey button real quick it's going to take a reading and what I want to see is this gray box change from what it was waiting for connection to what it is now a whole bunch of comma separated text we're good to go we got good signal and so uh, we are go we are all set to go ahead and start collecting so I'm gonna close that box and then get over my line I'm just gonna go to power mode here for the example but you can locate of course in any frequency you want but we have a power line right here so I'll locate it when I'm happy with my location and I have my depth reading showing up three foot four I will hit the survey button and it's going to take a reading and now you can see the Bluetooth working and sending it over to my form. My form pops up automatically on my map and if I scroll through my form you'll see my depth location, my depth uh, locator depth is right there, 40 inches, along with my GPS accuracy, 1.1 foot, uh, along with other locate information, what frequency I was on, my locate current, and GPS accuracy information. And we have form, uh, in this form we can set this up to be customized to whatever you want. Uh, we have cable type in here, so we have a drop down menu. We can put in a cable type, just pretend we're on a 100 pair, and I can lock that 
So from this point forward, every point I take will automatically put 100 pair in that selection. And so feature ID, um, notes, uh, you can add whatever you want, whatever boxes you want. You would, of course, take care of this on the desktop version. Now I can go ahead and hit add here, and you'll see that the point is now on the map. And so if I zoom in there far enough, I'll start getting my background data. So there we are. Shows this background data before this building was here. But there it is, a little dot on the screen. So I'll continue to keep locating. And as you locate, the beauty is you don't have to hit add every time. You just go ahead and take your point and send that information over. And of course, my battery went dead on my locator. I should have started with new batteries. But that form will pop up automatically every time uh, you're ready to, uh, to save a reading. So I got three foot two there. I'm going to try to do this with my remaining battery. And there's my form. You can see it put in 100 pair, put in my depth reading down below, and I go ahead 37 inches. Move my next one. I don't even have to close that form. I don't even have to hit the phone if I, if I know that it's been taken and it's been transferred over correctly. I'll go ahead and push the button again. That previous form closes, the new one opens up, and I'll take one more here. There we go, four foot five. Take that point, and there it is. So on my last one, I'm going to hit add. I'm going to shut off my locator so it doesn't annoy you. Uh, but I'll hit add, and you can see there's the line. It's a highlighted right now. We're not done with the line. That's why it's still highlighted. So if I'm done with this line, if I've completed my locate, I'll hit stop up on the top here, and now it turns green. Of course, that color is what we selected on the desktop when we set this up. Uh, but now that we're done with that line, we can go ahead and close the trace feature. And what we're going to want to do now is sync up this data to the cloud-based database. And so we can view it on our desktop back in the, at the office. So I'll go back on my phone here, go to the offline maps and sync, find my job. There's my job number and I will hit the sync button. And right now it's connecting and it's going to go ahead and sync up all the points that I've just taken. It's got two layers updated now and downloading any points that anybody else has taken. So if you want, if you're working on a job with multiple people, you can sync th uh, periodically throughout the day and they can too. And both of you can see where each other's at, what, what, what's been completed, what still needs to be done. Uh, but the guy back at the office can also see where you're at throughout the day and see what you've completed. So now everything's up in the cloud based system. We can view it. Everybody's got access to it and uh, we're done. And you know, the nice thing is, you know, your data is safe. As soon as you sync here, it's safe up in the cloud. And so if you drop your phone um, into the street, car runs it over, your data is not lost. It's already saved up in the cloud. You can take photos. You can, you can attach, uh, um, well, not only pictures, but videos and PDFs and other things to those uh, um, attributes as you're taking those points. If you need to take a picture of a valve, a manhole, you can just uh, hit attach and take that photo and attach and it will sync all that up as well. So if you got any questions, feel free to contact us and we can walk you through if you're having problems getting the Bluetooth to talk, uh, the locator, the geode, uh, the phone. Uh, but that's a quick rundown on how to get everything working correctly.